who's under Rio. And this is easy cleanup. The Nano, I mean, Rio's barely even trying, Della. It's just like, I'm in the right spot, right time. I'm gonna continue to hold down my left mouse button. Have to bring it over to the point. Jonak oh, entering Jonak's the action here. here from afar. You can't give Jonak yes. this much space. He is uh, my favorite player of all time in Overwatch. Yeah, finally, I think he got the health pack, but oh. backwards to the point. Kron fights over three. The pilot Diva pistol doing some work as Kron there with picks up another And it's Choice! He got to the back door, picked off two, and the charge staying in it. Oh, up. Well, Floor's still around. That's okay. the problem. Floor was able to pick off Profit, and Floor takes out Tonio, and yeah, he, he, he got a Floor in there. Floor will take down your entire team. Wow. Welcome everyone to some late night APAC action in the June Joust. I'm Vicky Kitty and joining me is Jaws and Jaws. After some of the action that we saw unfold earlier today with Doe and ZP and then yesterday, I don't know, my pickums are aflamed and they are just tossed out in the trash because wow, I don't even know what to expect anymore. If everything is just reversed in my head at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. This Part of the weekend has just been Pickham's boom day, I guess. Of course, the Saturday games, every game was an upset. We've just had an upset over Shanghai Dragons. A spark took them 3-0. Is it going to continue, Vicky? Maybe it is. And ZP said it himself, Vicky. If your Pickham's right now are for a team that is ranked higher, maybe think about switching them. Because right now, an upset's happening left, right, and center every single series. It's been a bit of an interesting one, Vicky. Yeah, it's been a wild ride here. When you take a look at the West and a wild ride at the East side of things too. So you know what? I do not know what to expect going in. But you guys, this week, submit your favorite Overwatch League player enjoying a nice Coca-Cola. I mean, of course, we see the classic image of Sato. But guys, if you have any other images that you want to submit, make sure that you guys submit it down below at overwatchleague.com slash art gallery. We love to see a lot of your artistic creations throughout the season so far. So surprise us with your favorite Overwatch League player drinking their favorite Coca-Cola. Yeah, or just recreate Sato 2L. That wouldn't be such a bad <laughs> thing either, just saying. There was a point, I think yesterday we were talking about that exact moment and we were wondering when the entire team was just going to take a giant swig of, uh, like every single one of them taking a giant swig of Coca-Cola and uh, finally regain their powers. I don't know, maybe it will happen at one point. Okay, Vicky, I think we need to get into this game because I want to know if it's going to be an upset. I think yesterday it was a pretty good it was a pretty good taste test of what the meta was going to be like and how a lot of the teams are going to perform, except a couple of them. New York did actually end up winning yesterday and Philadelphia ended up losing. The charge still not looking so hot and now they have to go up an NYXL who looks revitalized. They're ready to look like the NYXL of old. Yeah, this is actually so important. And one of those players that really stood out to me was actually a Friday. And uh, you could take a look at the screen currently with the comparison between Friday and Mondu. I mean, Friday did such a good job, but when it comes to his performance yesterday and being able to get that 2K on Legion as Lucio really helped solidify that map for them. But similarly, both of these support players just look uncomfortable on Brigitte, I want to say. And I feel like their stats really do reflect this. I mean, Mondu in particular has really been struggling on finding his footing within this uh, new composition that a lot of these teams are still kind of feeling out right now. And I think this match is going to really determine what we're going to be seeing here from the Hunter. So now when you take a look at the NYXL though, Jaws, they really have now started building a momentum for themselves. Yeah, they really have. And it's all off the back of a lot of these rookies coming into this season too. Friday being one of them, of course. This is These are his brick stats per 10, but honestly, his mercy has just been perfect yeah. for what yeah. the NYXL have needed. They've been pocketing Flora to high heaven, Feather too also. They've been running a lot of this Ash, this Echo. And Flora, mind you, rookie to the season, like I said, has been playing a lot of hit scan. 
and he is looking unbelievable. Only just turned 18, mind you. There were questions on how NYXL were going to perform coming into the season because mm -hmm. Jonak, who's been around since 2017, has been this veteran for this lineup and a veteran and a young as well for a lot of these younger players that have come into the roster. Of course, we've seen Jack Pan, Bianca, and Ivy before too. Ivy, of course, formerly Philadelphia Fusion, which we'll see later on. But it's been about uh, Jonak being this veteran for the squad and leading the rest of the team. NYXL in the past have been a team that have relied on Jonak to do almost the majority of the damage on the Zen. Of course, that's why he was season one MVP. Well, that's why he's got a skin, right? But this is a brand new look for the NYXL in terms of how it actually wants to operate. And my big question was, are they going to be able to stray away from this central Jonak carry figure role? It definitely seems like they've done just that. Flora on Ash is performing out of his mind. Feather as well. Looks like a very, very good meta for them when it comes to hero pools. Yeah, you talk about the the training that this team has gone through. You called Jonak last time Jacked Jonak. I mean, Jacked what Jonak. kind of That's what it. kind of training is Jonak putting these players through? Because that performance yesterday was just completely different than what we had seen in the main melee. So, and I think that's also really important because aside from the NYXL looking like a different team yesterday, I mean, to be fair, the Fusion did as well, but in a completely different fashion. But that's another story here. The NYXL they're going to be facing off against the charge and why don't we take a look at their starting lineup now too coming into this series i'm honestly excited to see what the charge is going to do to try to contest the nyxl especially since that momentum now is starting to build up in their favor you currently have eileen choice of one jihoon prong mandu and kariv and we saw this team yesterday joss what was your impression when you saw the charge lose to the spark in the way that they did I mean, it seemed like if they didn't have Eileen, it just wasn't going to happen, really. The reason why they did win that first map yesterday on Li Zhang Tower was because of Eileen's Doomfist, a signature hero of his, of course. But the charge, honestly, just a kind of weaker out of the gate. They, they really mm -hmm. did. It was not really much else to say on that. Spark looked better. Spark looked really good today, of course, beating Shanghai Dragons 3-0. But the charge just really haven't found too much to work with. It's really sad, honestly, because Krong last year was such an instrumental off tank. Like, the guy was an absolutely crazy Sigma player. And in a meta where Reinhardt's not in the mix and a lot, a lot more Sigma is being played in these double shield comps, I'm a little bit surprised that Krong isn't doing a little bit more. Of course, as an off tank, especially playing the Sigma, it does require your team as well to kind of pop off around you or at least keep, to like, uh, keep on par with a lot of the enemy DPS and a lot of the enemy supports as well. So you can just kind of get bullied around just because your other teammates are getting bullied too. But we'll have to wait and see. I, I have high expectations for New York coming into this yeah. map or this match. I don't have high expectations for charge at all, but it's only ups from here, right? The charges only win this season, Vicky, and I mentioned it yesterday when we actually cast them, was against the Valiant very early on. And that's a team that everybody predicted was just going to lose most of their games this season. They've definitely come out the gate stronger than a lot of people thought, but that's Charge's only win. They beat them 3-0, but it's still not great for the Charge. Only up, you have Kariv, you have Krong, you have Eileen, you do have the players to do it. If they can take a win here, it's going to be good, and maybe they can... Maybe they can start looking towards the playoffs for the June Joust, but every match really matters. There aren't many matches as well you're playing during this whole mm -hmm. season, Vicky, too. 16 in total. And if you haven't got things going now, it's not looking good for you later down the line. Yeah, you really don't have that much to work with, too, of course. First to three here, and when you take a look at the way that the NYXL performed yesterday, I mentioned momentum and mentality is really important. And you saw on the player cams that they were absolutely happy about the way that those results played out in their favor. Now, taking a look at the map pool, though, the first map that we're going to be seeing today for the series is going to be Nepal. And I'm curious to see how this is going to play into the charge and what they want to do here, especially coming out of that win from the NYXL. Excel, I would be looking at this team a lot more scared in comparison to before yesterday where, you know, the NYXL had only beaten one other team and it was actually the spark that had taken over charge just yesterday. 
Yeah, and but I knew, I knew your quick sell looked really good now. Like it's so strange to see a team week on week just make such drastic improvements. This Five, map specifically, four, Village, I think is going to be very nice two, for the charge. You can see one, Eileen already hovering one, the Doom Fist. You TP out, roll them to the point, and okay, I thought they were actually going maybe a little bit of double shield, but they want to go yeah. this full dive. And this is someone MYXL, by the way, have been doing a ton. Young Punk, Bianca, Winston, and Diva. That's the only thing they've really been running. Friday is going to be out of pocket Feather. Flora is going to be helping uh, Jonak as well, protecting him on the back lines. Eileen's going to have a tough time actually engaging here. You can already see Flora looking for some sort of rollout first and trying to pick off maybe someone in the back. As soon as he hears Eileen go in with his rocket punch or any manner of abilities, he's definitely going to be at his back ready to flash found the hammer. And look at this positioning that we're seeing right now, Jaws. Currently, NYXL not wasting any time on taking that point. But with the charge actually making sure that they take this a lot slower, you see they're prioritizing positioning here, holding onto the high ground. Oh, there's the rollout straight over the top. Oh, the uppercut with the flashbang. Doesn't matter, though. Oh, wow. That's a statement maker right there from Eileen. I like how they're just playing this a lot slower. And Eileen with a follow-up? Okay. This is already a flashy enough to notice that Eileen, we pinpointed this player yesterday. And now you can see exactly why. Already finding three kills at the start. It doesn't even matter if the NYXL captured the point first. All right, not bad. They find the flip almost instantly. That was, um, I was, I wasn't questioning the positioning from OXL there. It was kind of nice. Jonak holding back with Flora and almost baiting them in and saying, "Hey, Flora's here alone. You can easily kill him on the ball and the uh, and the and the doom." But then I sleep you. We have flashbang too. But it was Eileen's uh, sick roll out there with the help of Jihun. He was able to kill him ever so close to going down himself but that overshield already made sure he was able to survive and now they do control the point Feather's going to have clone but they're already going for the early engagement again and Flora's already down <laughs> and now on to Eileen and the fight's pretty much over already oh no Joan I've run there's nowhere to go Eileen is unstoppable already this is not what I was expecting when I took a look at the charge and the way that things were going to start off already, I, I lead just looks like he's building up so much for the rest of the team. The Big minefield's grab. now coming on board with the duplicate too. Having that grab is just such a good idea here for the NYXL because now they've taken back the point. Yakong is going to be able to dive right back in with the primal, but we have some trades going in. But both of the tanks here looking at the charge have fallen through and that's going to allow the NYXL to maintain this lead on the point. Oh, Jonah, the little 1v1 against Kariv too. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Okay, so Jonak and Flora basically did what they did on the first little fight there. Hold all the way back, they got picked off, and then Jonak just came back and able to nano Flora at the very end of that fight. And with the help of Yuckpung, when he had his primal rage, they were able to clear everybody off. It was a little bit scrappy, yes, but Eileen having to reset and get his cooldowns back did allow Flora and Jonak to come back into the action and be the heroes that they needed. Oh, again, oh. Flora straight <laughs> into Eileen. Right, point blank range with a dead eye. Eileen didn't see that one coming. In his face, too. He stared at death in the face, and Flora was able to take him out in that fight. And currently, the old economy, though, looking at the charges, looking pretty uh, nice here. This, this is what's going to be needed, though, to try to push onto this point. So you can see they're taking this a lot slower, waiting to reposition, trying to get some intel. And then Kron's grab is going to really make it or break it here, especially with Eileen disrupting the piece. Meteor Strike now is going to come online. And Kronk finds Friday. That's a big start for the pick. This is the way for them to reverse the situation back in their favor. And Eileen's going to already finish up the support lineup from the rest of the NYXL. Big anti into Bianca. And that's going to be the charge taking over this Oh, Eileen kills three. Oh, my word. Eileen just killed three. Just... It's really been a meta, by the way, of just nanoing the Echo at this moment in time. Well, we've seen a lot of nano Echoes, a lot of nano McCrees. Normally, you'd be like, yes, okay, throw it on the Winston, even the Wrecking Ball as well when you go for these big slams. But nanoing DPS in this meta just seems so good. You can see just why there. Eileen instantly killed Jonak and is able to survive a lot of this CC too because of the damage resistance from the nano boost. They managed to get the flip 65%. That is the charge, of course, and g going go in yet again. Jonak's in trouble. Ooh. And it's Laura, though, that finds Eileen and me managing to contain the threat that has been on this DPS lineup of the charge. Now with the rally, though, they're going to be able to initiate and engage right back onto the point. The Valk onto Friday, though, is going to help out the rest of the NYXL. Feather's duplicate is online. I like the way that they're adding in some of this poke damage and trying to isolate the support lineup in the back. And is he going to do it again? Feather with another grab. Going to have Kronk, though, that's going to have the grab first. Laura finds 
Crib in the back with the dead eye. But currently, you have the charge that still have the leap of beyond to even things out. What a way that these fights have gone through between 99 and 99%. The point that has been flipping back and forth, but you can see the charge. They took their time, and now the NYXL have set it over to overtime. No T's in, play, in session. Choice One's going to go down. It's going to tick down as well. There you go. NYXL taking village. Very scrappy towards the end. And Young Punt again, just saving the T at the very last moment with his Primal Rage and just staying alive on the point as well. Jonak is just unyielding too. He's just staring dead in the face. Like you mentioned before, that Eileen was doing that. Jonak is doing that too. It doesn't matter how many tanks are coming from flying towards him. He's finding ways to survive. And I mentioned it yesterday, and I'll mention it again. If your support player could just stay alive in these engagements, and especially as dive tanks, dive DPS are just jumping mm. at you, if you survive a couple of seconds longer than the enemy support players, your team's going to be in a very, very good position. The enemy tanks are going to use cooldowns actually getting to you, and then they're going to have to either retreat as you're the peels coming through. You saw there, of course, uh, Jihun and Eileen just tried to roll out onto Fora and Jonak again. They used all their cooldowns, and the whole of the MYXL just managed to collapse on them, and they got the kills. Big anti nade to start off the fight, though, is Jonak does land onto Manu and Karim, but shouldn't be too crazy to start us off with. A bubble, a really early bubble onto Eileen. He just manages to escape with the rocket punch. Point should unlock in a couple of seconds, too. The charge actually have a nice four position here, as Eileen's actually just sitting on the point already. And finally, uh, Feather off to the side here. Two doesn't find him, but it's going to be Jonak who goes down from uh, this repositioning from Chosen Wong, who's going to get onto the point first. I like this positioning that you made note of, actually, the way that Charge had taken the initiative in getting to the point first here. They split some of that attention from the NYXL, and they do take that point. Yeah, they sent Eileen in super early. They didn't even send him in with a bubble either. They used the bubble to make sure he could actually get out, and then they were able to push up. You kind of have to stagger back just a little bit if you're a, a team getting dived by a Doomfist. Oh, Speaking no. of which, Jonak's dead already. Yeah, and Eileen knew where his target was too. And Jihun, who finds two off the map, everyone's taking a party in the other side of this map. Oh, I mean, right now, Jihun, that was a great performance, and the charge are taking charge here. You can see how they're holding up all the way forward and are at that choke point. They're gonna hold back, but I like the old economy that we're seeing from the NYXL. You can it's take a look at both of the support. Yeah, I mean, we can take a look at the fact that Jonek already has that Nana boost, and my eyes right now are on both Yak Pung and Feather. They're gonna start the engagement pretty quickly. They got Space Jam, and they've got the mines as well. Feathers. Gonna try and stave off some of this aggression. Jack Punk gets nanoed. Eileen, another pick here for Eileen, putting the number advantage, make it two. He's been absolutely a fire, but we also need to highlight Krong, who's been able to get the fall up so well from Griff, who's been pressuring a lot of these people with the antis too. I really like the way that Charge is playing this. And a quick nap, but luckily Eileen's right there to help you. Oh my word, Eileen's Doomfist. This is exactly what we saw yesterday, Vicky. In on control on Lee Jung Tao, just take over the game from Doomfist. Honestly, just keep Eileen in, play this style. Just play the ultra drive and just try and punish the back line. He's uh, killed uh, Feather uh, again. 80% by the way, for the Guangzhou charge. NYXL get the reflip, but how long is this actually gonna last? And it's such a good idea too on this map. Flora finally shuts down Eileen, but at the cost of Flora's own life, as Krong is right there to punish them, Friday gets the res onto Flora, but it's Bianca who is forced to hold back here. The rally is going to allow the charge to maintain this aggression, but you currently have the NYXL regaining a lot of their strength. And Friday is going to be able to build into this valve, and it's going to be Feather utilizing the duplicate. Eileen's already creating a menace, or being a menace rather, in the back lines, but Flora calls them out before Eileen does any damage. What? The point has also been flipped twice, by the way. That was already heads-up play from Charge. They sent two people to the point, the Brick and the Vault, to try and cap and make sure NYXL like, draw themselves back to the point to try and get the recap. It was a little unfortunate that the rest of the Charge end up losing their lives, and then, yeah, you just get the copy, you sit on the point. I guess they don't get mines, but who cares? You manage to get the reflip and some extra time, and you force yourselves in a situation that maybe you get a bit of extra time if the Charge go to 99 and get the flip. Okay, the fight's gonna start again momentarily, I can imagine. Flora's got the dead eye, but oh, oh Nano Doom again! Oh, and he was bubbled to in the initiative of that fight right here. Jahoon takes a lot of damage, but it's gonna be Jonak who goes down first. Luckily, Friday had that Valve to help out, but it's not gonna be enough with Yapung falling next. 
floor, now being able to control some space, trying to find an angle with the Deadeye. Not going to be successful, but it's going to be Jihoon who also now has found Friday. Luckily, Jonek will be able to rotate in, but the NYXL are just trickling at this point. It's going to be up to the charge to hold this lead, and they're doing it in a pretty convincing way. Yeah, 97%. Someone's going to have to actually touch from the NYXL. Oh, the uppercut Ooh. just narrowly, narrowly takes Yuck Punch just ever so slightly high enough to uh, actually touch the point. But I don't think it's going to matter at the end of it. Flora takes that choice to one, but this looks like it's going to be over, Vicky. Flora going on to the Doomfist. They're tired of Eileen right now, Jaws. It's just been a menace. Krong's taking care of Bianca, but these trades are going more so in favor of oh, the, the charge with Krong Pop and Opti Hoon now on the ball, getting so many of these environmental picks on this map. I love the way the charge are playing this composition currently on this first map. Yeah, this is a very, very good point for Doomfist as well. This next one, yeah. not so much. If you're able to actually capture the point on Sanctum, they have to flood out and they have so, uh, flood out of the mega health pack room and they have so many walls in their bag. You saw the Chargers game plan. They want to nano Eileen at every single opportunity they get, Vicky. They send him in, they can bubble him out and the damage, uh, damage reduction from the nano boost is great. Plus the overshields as well from hitting multiple targets. It's a devastating combo when you have Jihoon as well, just rolling on in. Charge, they're looking pretty good. This map, not as favorable for the Doofus, like I mentioned. We'll have to see what Eileen wants to play. Yep, yeah, okay, so it's gonna be Soldier instead. This is more NYXL's wheelhouse here. They now don't have to deal with this Doom. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to see how Eileen's been able to dabble with so many different heroes overall. You can already see the poke coming in too, as Eileen is going to get into a position to get into those back lines and put some of that pressure onto both Jonak and Friday. Jonak took a lot of damage there. Luckily, we'll be able to retaliate, and Feather goes down first. That's going to be a big deal here for the charge, as you can already see the way that they're building into some of these ultimates already. Prong up ahead, and they are going to be able to get the point first. Floor goes down, and making some of these adjustments have not been easy, as the charge is just constantly running into the NY Excel. Jehoot specifically, I love this tank lineup from the charge, and he's been consistently getting these environmental fits. That was a very greedy play there from Flora, but I felt like he, well, at least he felt like that he needed to get a pick. They lost one fairly early in Feather. Eileen managed to pick him out of the skies. They weren't able to go for the res because the ball can interrupt and choice of one can also kind of jump on you as well. And Flora felt like he needed to go for the pick there, so he kind of ran forward. He used his roll aggressively. He used his flashbang aggressively to try and find an inch of summon. Choice of one transforms though straight into Monkey. Oh, and straight into Flora, too. The moment Flora activated the dead eye. Oh, can Feather get away? And Choice One now having the primal up so quickly after utilizing this duplicate. And he's found two, making three in total after the initiative of this fight here. And the way that Choice One just played this has now bought a time away from the NYXL and in favor of the charge. Oh boy, oh boy. Charge looking so good in this next fight as well. They took it super early. As soon as that monkey engaged, Yuck Pung engaged onto the back line of the charge. Choice One just spreads the go button. He jumps to the back line of NYXL, and then he almost instantly gets primal. You saw him there. Easy double kill, as there was no one left to protect or peel from his Yuck Pung and Bianca were already in. Oh, ready engaging here. Feather is going to have the duplicate. Now activating the mind to control some of that it's space, force out the rest of NYXL to go over to the side. But with Feather getting the Diva Bomb already, Eileen's in the back. And this is not the position that you want to be in when it comes to Eileen, who's been such a threat so far. Crib has gone down, though, and Mandu already utilized that Valk, and Eileen gets taken out. But Eileen was one in that situation. As the point is forced to get flipped by the NYXL, I mean, you're currently eagerly making your way over to 99%. They luckily flipped the point, but a lot of that momentum had been lost with the charge just really doing a good job at keeping the NYXL at bay. They weren't even really able to escape that choke point at first. Yeah, if you're a 97% for the charge right now, you're feeling pretty happy with yourselves. You maybe take this next dry fight and see what you can actually extract out of the NYXL Ultimate Bank. Choice of one is building up towards this copy, and that's going to be their go sign yet again. He's going to transform into Winter Winston, I can imagine. Wow, okay, very early nano from Jonag. They're not going to really be able to get much with this. Even if they do, it's going to be a fairly easy fight for the charge next. 
Both Arnis end up trading. In fact, Gore goes down as well. Jihan's on a tear. And he drops the race What is he doing? What is he doing? He's been an absolute menace disrupting the peace. And honestly, Joss, this is what I was expecting when I saw the hero bands for this month. And Jihun is really displaying such a great performance on ball so far. Not only disrupting the rest, but getting two while he's at it. He's been constantly doing this over to the side. Yeah, okay. That really sucks that you can't follow that up. If I'm that ball player in that situation, it's like, I saw Rez, I killed two while me pushing. But it was actually MYXL that took the fight to the back line of the charge. They didn't feel comfortable going in, but they definitely do now. Nano Choice of One. Yeah, Choice of One has a duplicate too. It's a menace. Jonak goes down. It just leaves Friday for the sustainability. And now with the minefields, they do try to pull off the res, and they do it successfully. Choice of One saw that happening, and Floor now has used up the Deadeye. You currently see the way that both of these teams are kind of spread out. They're just trying to utilize the pillar in the middle for cover. It's going to be Choice of One on the duplicate and finding Yuk Fung. Luckily, though, the minefields, both of these echoes duplicating the tanks. That's how you have to play this out now, Jaws. Now the charge. They've been able to maintain this lead, putting Bianca to sleep, and that's one way to maintain this first map. Luckily, though, the NYXL, they're not giving up, and they're not giving up easily. Yep, Pung is still in this fight. He's still trying to roll back in. Luckily, though, the rest of the charge have cleaned things up around the NYXL. Wow, what a... I would say different look from the charge, but I'm honestly, I'm still impressed that Eileen can find, so, uh, find anything with the soldier. How is that even a possibility? He's mentioned to My take out Feather in the Skies <laughs> with the help of Choice of One. But again, th these rookies that have come into this year to the APAC region are just unbelievable at Echo. The, uh, Flora, Flora, Feather, Choice of One have just been an unbelievable force in the APAC region so far. Choice of One's Echo yet again. We saw it just pop off yesterday. They did end up losing two, even though Choice of One is just consistently just cleaning house. Oh, man. This is going to be a series and a half. It, it could be an upset once more, Vicky. We don't know. There's been four upsets in a row in the Overwatch League June Jouse already. <coughs> we'll have to wait and see if it's going to be another one. MYXL, they are definitely the favorites in this series. Guangzhou charged the underdogs. Will it be that story? Nah, I'm not too sure. We're going to have to find out on the other side of this break. Don't go anywhere because an upset, a potential upset is currently on our hands. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile. And by Indeed, we help people get jobs. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. And by IBM, the official cloud and AI partner of the Overwatch League. 
Welcome back, everybody. The NYXL versus the Guangzhou Charge. The Charge now leading the series currently 1-0. to zero. It's first is three here, Jaws. And my pickums they're quite literally crying in the bin. Again, I know you warned me. You said just pretend like it's opposite day today. Well, that's what I'm going to approach the rest of our matches for today because I don't know. The NYXL, they were looking strong, but it's the Charge that actually end up coming on top, making some of those adjustments. And can we talk about Eileen real quick? Yeah, Eileen's been looking good on the Doomfist, but remember, Vicky, this is exactly what happened yesterday. So, you know, put it aside a second, wait till we see the second map, and then I think we can judge how the uh, how well the charge have been doing. They they always seem to just crush control, or at least have a, a dominant showing on it, at least. They are now heading into the next map, and if you recall, back from yesterday, they ended up getting crushed for the next three maps. So are they a one-trick control team? Not entirely sure. We'll have to wait and find out. But the charge can only go up from here. I, something I said at the very start of the series, they haven't been looking hot coming into the season, although Choice of One has just been doing phenomenally on the Echo. You mentioned it during the break, but his copies have just been so, so good. Him, His ability to dive as well with Jihun has also been fantastic. Jihun's Wrecking Ball has been looking good too. Looks like we got a small substitution though. We're not seeing Eileen taking a back seat this time around. It's actually going to be Jihun. Rio's coming in, which I can imagine means we're going to be seeing a little bit more a monkey dive here. Mm -hmm. Maybe with a Zarya from Kronk, or we see a little bit of the Diva too. Yeah, changing things up. Uh, Rio now coming in. That's going to be a, allowing the charge to try to at least have an upper hand on the NYXL, maintain this lead that they've now uh, been able to build up for themselves. But, you know, you worded it perfectly. We're not going to be going onto a control map anymore. We're going on to a hybrid and looking at Hollywood. What do you want to see from the charge to at least try to make sure that they're not a one trick uh, control team here? I mean, weirdly enough, Doom's actually, I don't think Doom's actually that bad on this map if you do, if you just take fights super aggressively. You can do the fancy, like, Doom parkour rollout. I practice Doom parkour on this map all the time, I'm just saying. Like, there's a lot of routes you can take <laughs> where you can just kind of surprise your opposition. You can bounce off a lot of the cars. You can do a lot of, it's called a diag. I don't know if uh, anybody else is familiar with it. I'm sure all of YouTube chat is a top 500 Doomfist player, but... <laughs> um, there's things called diags that on diagonal surfaces. If Doompist punches them, he gets launched up into the air. There's a lot of those fancy things you can do on this map. Um, normally you won't see that in Overwatch League play because it is very easy to telegraph and you always kind of know where the Doomfist is, unlike, uh, unlike Solo Q, of course. But I just want to see Eileen stick on this dive hero. I, I wouldn't mind seeing the soldier, but a Doomfist wouldn't be bad. Rio and Krong too just enable Eileen to do well. Nano him time and time again. That's what you got to do to succeed. That's how they've been succeeding on these control maps. Think back to Village. How many nanos did Eileen get? A million. Literally every single one. I yeah. can't count a single one that he didn't receive. Like you just got to pocket him, and he will do your team wonders. Let's have a look at the defense, though, because we can, of course, talk about that now as the NYXL are starting there, Vicky. It's going to be the same kind of thing. The NYXL clearly have found what they're comfortable with in yeah. this meta. And this was kind of a comp that a lot of people expected to see play. Echo, extremely versatile. You can transform into basically everything. And of course, Flora on the McCree has looked very good too, and with the Mercy Pocket as well. It enables you to um, help your other healer out a ton and put a lot of pressure on this dive as well that's normally coming in. I'm a little bit disappointed now we're seeing Eileen on the McCree. It's a mirror matchup, so it's just going to be skilled if. And that's what it's going to come down to. I, I still prefer Eileen going on a dive hero because I think with Rio coming in, it just enables that so much more. Yeah, and especially since they have Rio coming in to play that Winston. Bringing this fight over to the side is going to be Feather, though, keeping their their eyes on the back line. And you talk about the pocket, but we're seeing a very similar output from the charge, too, with Mondu making sure that Choice One is enabled and sustained safely. Splitting up some attention, though, and diving right into the high ground. Rio and Kron took so much damage, but Choice One now being able to find Friday, that's a support down from the NYXL, and they don't have that spawn advantage that you currently see. Big Anti onto Jodak. He survives somehow. Yo, oh, but not so late here. Yakpun also takes a lot of that damage. There was so much chaos happening behind this point. You saw that the NYXL were actually trying to back off a little bit, but the charge actually played that pretty spread out. Yeah, that was a lot on the Kariv there, the Ana. 
Honor Specialist, Honor Extraordinaire, whatever you want to call him. He's a good Honor player, that is for sure. The Byron Aid forced the entirety of MYXL back, enabling Mandu there to jump in and get the Resurrect. And he built up Nano extraordinarily quickly too. Jeronek didn't even have a chance to use his Nano in that fight, so it was just out nanoing. That was basically it. It was just the race towards the nano boost. The charge end up winning it, and they end up taking the cafe and then taking the point two. Early engagement, though, you kind of want to hold people at the doors, and Copy is available for Feather as well. As Flora, you can even hold off on the high ground with the help of Friday, too. Can create a lot of space with the high noon. Wow, these antis. Eileen actually falls because of that. This one has that duplicate onto the Ana to try to get that nano boost, but really isn't getting much off of it with the rest of the charge taking so much damage. Ryo's gonna go down to that anti too. A nice follow from Flora to help make sure that they solidify that pick. And the NYX have finally found their footing here at Jaws, and you can already see the way that they're kind of staggering the charge that the charge have kind of lost that momentum now. Yeah, that was, again, a nano advantage because Jonak didn't use his at the very first engagement on, on point A. A nano, someone in, they throw an anti nade from downtown, and anybody that does jump onto the back line of an MYXL gets slept, naded, flashbanged, and then Friday can jump to whoever, uh, who anybody who is hurt, Jonak included, and then just heal them up because you also have Feather jumping in with a copy, so he's going to be safe for more than quite some time if he changes into a tank. Looks like Charger are going to try and dispute this high ground that the MYXL have taken. Rio jumps in with the primal rage, but instantly slips. Oh, so oh, just no. right on top. Goodbye, bye bye, Rio. Rio. <laughs> See you later, mate. Oh, you're going to sleep with the fishes at that point. That was a great performance. Good follow up, too, and uh, making sure that Rio won't be in this fight. Make it two tanks, though, because the charge are missing some of those space makers. You can see the way that they're backing off, giving that space over to the NYXL. And I like how they still have Jonax uh, Nano Boost. We'll talk about how important it is, but Griff does have his to match that with the NYXL. Yeah, they kind of caught themselves up now at this point, which is super nice. That was a really unfortunate death by Rio. Beautiful sleep. Speaking of engages, though, there's the Nano and Yuck Punk. Oh, and it's Yuck Pung who's gonna come back here. Flora gets the headshot on Zamandu, but it's the charge that have found two against the NYXL. Feather won't be able to use that duplicate. Friday's trying to hold back, helping out Yuck Pung in the process, but with Flora going down, they may want to go for a reset at this point, because you already see Rio has blood in his eyes, and he wants to make sure he can finalize that so that way he can get that primal up at the ready. Two different nano uses there as well. I spoke about it in map number one, but nanoing the DPS, Eileen was sat right at the back. Well, okay, wait for this engagement first, and then I'll talk to her about that. Yeah, choice one now with the duplicate to engage over to the side here. Griff finds Friday. Friday, unfortunately, getting a little unlucky, constantly being shut down. Choice one with the primal. We've seen these duplicates and how much it's been able to work out for the charge. Choice one with these engagements has been phenomenal. Now they're sandwiching NYXL and they isolate Jonak in the process. The anti is going to be the one to nail Jonak in the coffin. Floor is going to go down here too. And this is scary. Whenever I see charge gaining that momentum, that's it. You really only have a primal yet hung on the point to stop you, but for how much longer now that the NYX off to go for another reset? Man, I was going to reserve my judgment for the charge, and I said, I want to see map number two before I make uh, a judgment on and how well they're going to do in the series. Well, they're doing pretty well. Uh, point B of Hollywood taken pretty swiftly. They've got a nice few ults coming up as well. They can just poke from afar. This backline from the MYXL kind of crumbling. Kariv killing Friday and then nading Jonak for the kill as well. That just cannot happen if you're the MYXL. They're going to try and dispute high ground again as they nano in the monkey. And nano Yapung, he gets put to sleep. He's forced to hold back. Eileen with the dead eye. Buying a lot of that respect that forced out Jonak to have that nano boost onto Yapung, so now they don't have that in the in the pocket anymore. See the way oh, that fighting heads though, Eileen taking care of Yapung and the way that the NYXR are playing so bad. I mean you're forced here, and this is a map that they're so familiar with, Jaws. I mean, overall in Hollywood, they have an 83% win rate, but the charge are not making it look like that. Oh my word. Choice of one, Eileen. Everybody's just getting kills with the charge. There's nothing that MYXL can do. They can't even make a dent in the armor that is the Guangzhou charge right now. Mandu oh. at least goes down to the high noon, but is it going to be enough? 
This is something, at least, your Jaws. But Choice of One has been uncontested. He's the real threat, and he finds a quick 2K onto both Yakpung and Flora. This line of sight that we're seeing, and Adetta, he hasn't been stopped. No one stopped him. They're trying, but he hasn't even been put to sleep. Jonex not even alive, and they were able to take this payload so quickly, Jaws. I mean, take a look at this time bank. A minute and 48 seconds, and they did it so quickly, too, especially for that last point. Oh my word, Kariv and Mantu are doing an unreal job of keeping Choice of One and Eileen alive. Choice of One had no right to be where he was without the duplicate, and not even in the duplicate form either. He gets naded, he gets instantly pocketed as soon as he calls for it. Mando, uh, Mando, M Mandu even. I don't know why, I was thinking of something, I was thinking of another character from another game. Mandu, <laughs> um, as soon as he hears... Choice of one, whistle. It's like, come quickly, heal me, heal me. Come to me, I need healing quickly. And instantly, in a, in a blink of an eye, he is there on top of him. He receives an aid and just is kept alive in the skies. Flora is just having such a hard time trying to contest him. Of course, it is up to Feather and Flora to try and do that. A little bit of Bianca as well to absorb some of the sticky bombs and defense matrix, a lot of that fire apart from the free, uh, apart from the be uh, the focusing beam. But there is nothing that's killing him. He's, he's an immortal killing machine. As soon as that happens and your Echo is cycling ults as well that quickly and doing a lot of the additional damage with the damage boost, uh, you've got to just question how the MYXL are approaching these fights because they're letting Choice of One and the backliner charge just get away with murder. 1 minute 49 or 48 in the time bank too, Vicky. They're feeling pretty good themselves about that. That's a threat. Choice One has just been that threat, and they can't really seem to find a way to take care of him. I feel like overall, though, it's not just Choice One is positioning, but of course the rest of the charge are doing a really good job at enabling him. And you can't ignore Eileen, who's been a threat, of course, on their own. But you know, when you have that threat getting tacked onto Feather and Eileen being that blood force, it's so difficult. And currently, you have the NYXL now having to find this engagement, having to bring this fight over to the point. It's they're taking a, a little bit of a of their time here because you can see they're trying to get some of this uh, burst going down. You talked about the nano boost earlier, and that's what they're trying to wait out for for Jonax to start this initiation. Yeah, they're going to be able to pressure the point here. Is there going to be any response from the charge? Maybe not. Eileen's in trouble, though. Well? Is he going to be able to get out alive? Surely not. He's trapped in the corner with no LOS on his healers at all. This split positioning from the charge, a little bit questionable, if I'm going to be honest. They're now 5v6 situation with Cafe Control belonging to the MYXL. Oh, that was so unfortunate. The way that the positioning was questionable. But Rio still found Flora, though, at the same time. I mean, they're nearly able to try to get this payload moving, but both DPS have gone down. It's going to be Krong and Rio taking the MVP seats in the driver's side. And now the NYX, how did they not? They were able to split up the charge, but they were not able to finalize this payload and get it going. Instead, Choice of One has shoved the NYXL back. And thankfully, with Rio and Krong constantly being at the helm of these fights, they've been doing a really good job at controlling the positioning of the NYXL. Choice of One should be able to get out here. He's going to have Primal Rage. Oh, no, he gets slept. Doesn't get the Primal. Can they actually finish him off? They do. Very good start. And now Kriv's in trouble. And he's by himself. There's nowhere for him to go. Instead of just Feather tossing him around Rio, trying to help him out. But he's found Jonak. Once again, Rio and Krong together, this synergy of this tank lineup has been insane. He's been able to split the keys, and the NYXL gets so close, but they're shoved off the point from that primal. Now, Yapong, it's his turn to be able to juggle a lot of these people off of this point, and instead, it's going to be the charge that have a lot of these ultimates to work with, the NYXL too, but Feathers found Krong, who's made a pretty big impact. Luckily, though, the NYXL are trying to contest this point. They're trying to finally get this payload moving, and it's Feather who's popping up in the side room. He said, all right, Choice of One has had his fun. Now it's my turn to shine for once. Eileen's still killing people, Vicky. This isn't open, uh, like, over. MYXL now have to back out. What? The MYXL How? had a perfect punish on the charge there, who overextended to try and almost spawn kill people. But it was just Rio and Krong being able to keep themselves alive. Enough time for Eileen and Mandu and Kariv to come back and cycle onto the point. That 75% that uh, the MYXL gained, or 66%, sorry, the MYXL gained earlier on, I thought it was going to be their doom, but apparently not. I, I was just questioning. Feather had gotten two. I mean, overall, the charge, the way that 
Real has been able to help things out and maintain and split the piece, I mean, has been insane. The duplicate now from Feather. Let's see if Feather could do something. It's going to be Choice One, though, with the focusing oh, beam. And Eileen taking a nap. That was a big sleep, especially with that positioning that Eileen had with the Deadeye. Currently have the duplicate still on for Feather, but he took so much damage there. That was actually thanks to the change and the patch that we're currently playing on in comparison to what we had seen from the main melee. And it's the charge again, finding these picks, Jaws. NYXL have not been able to even capture this point, and they have less than 30 seconds to do it. They have 25 seconds remaining. Bianca and Yuckpunk just go down here. This is looking extraordinarily bad. <laughs> The charge, I was questioning why they let go 66%, but apparently they just like to dance on the knife's edge without getting cut. Jonak, Nano, Friday has a Val, Yuckpunk has the <laughs> the Primal Rage, but look at how close they're playing up. Choice of one almost eliminates Feather, and can anybody oh, touch yeah. only just? Oh, whoa, whoa, that was so close. It was Friday with a Val. Although we're fighting these picks, but Choice One gets stunned right there. That was a good follow. Friday is the one that takes care of Choice One. Friday's like, I'll take matters into my own hands. It's not Friday, it's Sunday here, but the NYXL have a fighting chance. They finally get this payload moving, Jaws, and they did this three times before the charge to stop them. We're gonna get a quick stagger, but wow, what a hold from the charge. You can take a look at that limited time bank already from the NYXL. Yeah, they held 33% to that point. NYXL only needed one tick, and it almost took them three and a half minutes to do so. That was an incredible point A defense. They do get the cart rolling, and NYXL have a very, very good position on the high ground at this point. Floor is going to be able to sit up here with Friday as well, with the high noon. They haven't got Nano, unfortunately, as Jonek had to use it in that last engagement to really just end the fight there and then and make it as definitive as it was. Take a look at this positioning, though, from Bianca. This is where we saw Rio uh, get put to sleep and Bianca get the follow-up with that I mean, bomb, I'm just looking at Flora's positioning, honestly. He's sitting all the way back with the high noon there. As soon as the engagement comes in for the charge, he can just hit the Q button and force them all away so they can retake high noon. Uh, retake the high ground, sorry. Yeah, he's going to just let it rip, but it's going to be Feather now with the duplicate. And Eileen actually utilizing that Deadeye first, but notice how his positioning wasn't as great as Floor's there. He was on the ground and Bianca shut him out almost immediately. Eileen gets res and gets put back into the fight. That's going to be Manju's positioning that's going to allow that extra body to be here. And it's going to be Floor who backs off, creates some of that space with the Deadeye. I like how more patiently that Floor is playing this, but he has to avoid this Diva Bomb from the Echo Duplicate from Choice of One, who's once again just been on a terror. Krong has found Jonak, and the Charge have now been able to not only split the NYXL's forces thin, Yuck Pong has been forced out to use that Primal after getting anti and taking so much damage. Who's gonna stop Choice One though? He's getting away with murder just like we saw when they were on the attack. Choice of One's gonna kill Feather off a zoo. Uh, this is again last fight territory. Wow. With a very, very close payload to that second point. Charge really loved dancing on the nose edge. Oh my word. Right, they have got the self-destruct, they've got primal rays, they've got nano coming up as well. The only tool in the bank for the NYXL is going to be the self-destruct. And they're going to have, I feel like they're going to have to use it to, to zone this nano engagement. But they can just nano choice one, he's going to be able to get that copy so, so quickly. This is a very bad spot for the NYXL to be in. They also need to be able to touch payload, but they should be able to do that for free. Shouldn't be too difficult, as it's just under this walkway, but Feather's already dead. Yeah, they gotta stay in, and so is Friday, Jaws. That's already two down, but we're finding some picks, though, onto the charge, and it's gonna be the support lineup going down. Is it gonna be enough with Rio having that primal? Now, as they are trying to push this point, you can see Rio, he's managing to keep Bianca off the point. They have to avoid the Diva Bomb, and Charter One still left. finding some of these picks. One person left, but nobody and left to touch the point. What a performance that we have seen from the charge in the second map. And now, Jaws, I must ask you, what are we seeing from the charge right now? Because after map one and two, they are just one map away from taking it over from the NYXL. Wow, these games are just ridiculous. Just so chaotic. You can see, the, even just looking at the kill feed, it's like NYXL and then charge get a kill, then NYXL and then charge get a kill, then NYXL. But it's come down to these tanks. Rio being able to get a double primal rage at the very end. It was going to be hard <laughs> anyway with NYXL only having the self destruct, but oh my word. I may have spoken a little bit too soon, Vicky. The charge dismantling the NYXL. Choice of one, Rio, 
what an unbelievable dive combination. It's looking good. I am curious how the MYXL come back from this. I mentioned at the very start of the day or the top of the day even, MYXL, leader Jonag, a lot of rookie talent DPS, but choice one right now, looking like a better rookie than Flora and, uh, Flora and, why can't I think of his name? Flora and Feather, there you go. Flora and Feather combined. His echo is unbelievable right now. I, I just don't know what I'm seeing right now from the charge. I mean, that just looked pretty convincing overall. You saw the way the NYXL struggled to even get the payload moving. Currently, the charge had no issue with it when they were on the attack. And currently, we have a pretty dominating lead in the series. It's going to be the charge holding it down 2-0 to zero currently against the NYXL. We got map number three coming up shortly here in the Overwatch League. Don't go anywhere. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile. everybody to the NY Excel versus the Guangzhou charge they're charging up a lead right now two to zero and they only need one more map to take the entire series Jaws what has been this first week here in this new month I mean I know teams are figuring things out right now but wow this is not what I was expecting after the results of the May Melee yeah, I mentioned that every game over the last day or so has been an upset Looking like this one might be that one as well. Charge can only go up from here. And they are going up. They're skyrocketing into the stratosphere. Choice of one, Rio, like the entire team. Eileen is doing a fantastic work job as well. Uh, I prefer him on the Doomfist than his Kree, but Choice of one is just doing the deadlifting right now. My word, they're looking good. Kariv too. Kariv is able to pocket uh, choice of one, so hard, and Mandu as well with the Mercy and the Ana. J just unreal, keeping this guy alive so he can just, just flex on kids left, right, and center. The NYXL doesn't know what hit him right now. It could be a 3-0. It very well could be. Just straight up, next map. We'll have to wait and see if the NYXL got anything uh, hidden in the cookie jar, but looking unlikely at this current moment in time. And it's funny because I, I really bigged up NYXL at the very start of the day. I thought it might have been a 3-1 to them potentially. That would probably have been my bet on the scoreline if I was doing my pickums. But it's turned everything on its head. Hey, it, the last couple of days, they've been absolutely crazy. Maybe everybody's just got such a lack of sleep, Vicky, that uh, <laughs> and, the, and the hero pool's coming in. Everybody's late night studying that it's just affecting everybody's brains differently. And these lower tier teams or these underdog teams are just blowing everybody out of the water. Yeah, I mean, that is, a, after seeing the way that the NYXL played yesterday, I had higher expectations going into this series. I was honestly on the same foot as you. When it comes to looking at the charge, we haven't really been able to see them find their footing in the entire season so far. We talked about how their only win is against the LA Valiant, and right now it's looking like the NYXL may be added to their uh, pockets currently as we do go on to the third map. Once again, this is match point 
for the Guangzhou Charge. Going into Junkertown, though, this is interesting. Of course, we talked about how the Charge always looks strong on control, but now they've just taken hybrid. What is your opinion going into Junkertown when you take a look at the Charge and you know that this team wants to finalize this map so that way they can do this clean 3-0 and a handshake and walk away? Okay, well, you know you have to play Widowmaker on this map. It's just a given. So Mike Haley Lee is coming in. Oh, my word, and we're seeing Guangbong. Okay, Guangbong. Oh my goodness. So there were so many scrimbucks surrounding this guy on the NYXL. I want to see him perform. I really do. But the scrimbucks, 99% of the time, I feel, they do end up lying. Can Guangbong do it? I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> like, I have my reservations. <laughs> Double sniper two, Ivy on the, the hand zone, oh, no. <laughs> and he just gets his head clicked. Okay, to fantastic the moon. start. <laughs> to the moon. <laughs> Gotta hold your scrim bucks out here. Um, that is not a way to start things off, though. I mean, it was I, one open scrim, okay? It. it was <laughs> literally one open scrim, and people were singing his praises. You know, I've got high hopes for a lot of rookies that came out of Korean contenders uh, over the last year, but I want to see some performance on the Overwatch League YouTube channel first before I make my final judgment. Honestly, especially with uh, things really kicking up this month. Currently have Yakung trying to do some of this damage. Oh my goodness, there's so much chaos, but it's gonna be Guangbong who's gonna be able to find that first pick onto choice one, who's on the Genji, by the way. And I know we were talking about uh, this character earlier when we were watching the first match of the day. And Jaws, what, I mean, now seeing these swaps though, Bianca's taking care of Rio. What are your opinion going into this meta that we're gonna, we're, the composition rather, going into the way that the Charger plays? I mean, they're not really getting too much out of it. Oh, I just got punched. He actually just got decked. Unlucky. What? Krog's in the back line, uh, by the way. He's just demolishing uh, the front line. Someone should punish him, maybe, potentially. Please kill him. Thank you very much. He's finally dead. <laughs> the MYXL just <laughs> leg Krog into the back line and kill him off. Okay, Guangbong, yeah, not doing too bad now. Mike Ali ends up going down. They should be able to cap this one pretty easily. So he should not need to activate sights. Ideally, you just get a better position here if you're the charge. Okay, activate sights, and yeah, they instantly back off. They don't want to mess with it. They'd rather take high ground positioning over a staggered down. fight on point A. Ivy's got the nano boost. Oh, he's coming out, finally. Oh, yep, with the nano boost. It's going to be Ivy, though, tearing his way through, finding Ooh. three, and what a statement. And those are three of the players that had their ultimates ready, too. So that is one way to definitely build up and keep that lead, as you are going to be able to push that payload uncontested. Yeah, nice little uh, high ground there you had, Charge. Unfortunately, we nanobladed before you could even just uh, <laughs> naked play it. Yeah, we haven't got the nano boost either. They're going to have to rely on something extraordinarily special. This comp was actually talked a little bit about uh, in the pre-season scrims that were going on. This uh, comp that the Charge are currently running, because every ult does have mad value, especially when it's used with the uh, Supercharger. It's probably going to be a Supercharger blade. If it's just a blade in its own, it's not going to get all too much, I can imagine. He's trying to see actually what they're trying to go for here. They are trying to control that high ground. And here comes a rally, but Mondu gets hit by an anti. Big anti. Kruv is forced to utilize the immortality field, and he's taken out of the fight right away. Yet Pung with these primals has been able to disrupt a lot oh, of the man. charge. And now finding Mikey Lee over to the side here. That's one way to go about it. He's still in the back lines too, by the way, from the charge. But Choice of One has found his Ditto, and he's been able to successfully take care of Ivy in oh. the process. Make it Friday too, and beyond. He doesn't need anything but that supercharger that you may mention of Jaws. Oh, okay, nice little double dash there. That looked pretty fancy. Not quite a ghost dash, but looked pretty good nonetheless. Yeah, I said, ah, probably not going to get much if he doesn't have damage boost. Also, Rio managing to hold the Baby Diva 2 to, so he can get the reset. Looking pretty good. Now they take the high ground back again. It is so much more difficult now for the MYXL to set up their Widowmaker. Very few sight lines, plus you're running into double shield too. So, not going to look so hot against Mike A. Lee here. You can see here right now. Yeah, there's... What, what angle do you take here? Like, it's almost impossible for you to try and find something without your team going for this big engage first. Looks like what well, they want to nano in the Winston. Looks like it. Young Pong gets nanoed. He jumps in, but Flux is coming out. Yeah, the Gravitic Flux stopped them immediately when they try to dive in. And now the NYXL are getting molly walked in this room. There's nowhere to go. And with so many people caught in that Gravitic Flux, it's going to be the charge wasting some of that time away from the NYXL.
You see what I mean? Guang Bong just doesn't have room to move on this Winnermaker. He might as well be on Kree at this moment in time because Mike Lee can sit all the way at the back. Krong, that was the easiest flux of his career right there. The entirety of the MYXL funneling his mega health pack room. The Nana comes out. He's like, all right, me going to hit Q now, I guess. The only thing you have to really worry about is uh, Jonak's sleep, right? Okay, sites have been activated. Mike Lee has to play a little bit more safe. Nana boost is available though. No supercharger, but Rally's gonna help him out surviving a lot of that incoming damage. And if they can right here too. Losing a lot of these ultimates here from the NYXL Friday with the Valk. Mandu, after using that rally, they still have maintained that high ground position, but it's going to be Choice One who's coming in from the skies. He has that Dragon Blade at the ready to try to charge in. Really trickles down to how he's going to use this here as Kriv is slowly getting up with that Nano Boost. He's oh, he gets put to sleep. He got put to sleep, but Kriv is about to get the Nano Boost. If he can try to do something, he's still doing it. He gets a 3k. How did he get woken up? Who did this? Make it a 4k. Why have you done this? They had a plan and now he's gonna try to make it four. I mean, at least trying to get the D-Bag. Nah, he's not gonna get away with it. He tried, he flexed a little bit. Then he's gonna go for a reset, but wow, what a performance. And by the way, without the Nana boost. Oh my, Jonak is mad right now. He landed the perfect sleep on the bleeding Genji and then he wakes up and kills four people. Okay, last engagement now. Nano Winston in, <laughs> Krong is in trouble. And less than a minute here, Krog got anteed. Talk about meeting yourself into the spawn. The Gravitic Flux won't be used here, but it's going to be the Supercharger instead from Rio to help out a lot of that damage. And the NYXR are going to have to respect that, but they have no time in the bank here. Curly, as you see, Joss, this is looking a little scary for the NYXL. Yeah, 25 seconds do remain. They're running into sights as well for my Lee 2 and a Flux. They could just even Flux 9 them if they really wanted to. Friday and IV go glow bright purple as Kariv stems them off just a little bit. There's the sights for the last final few moments. Ivy's looking for a flank, but he's going to get spotted out by Kariv. Gravitic Flux now. It's only found Bianco. Over to the side, it's going to be Jonak who's going to help out with that sustainability, but they need to get onto the point. The overtime is ticking away. Luckily, it gets reset. Yapung has found Choice One who has that blade at the ready. They're finding these trades. But Kwong by himself finding Bianca isn't going to be enough. Mike Lee does find Ivy, but with the rest of Bianca, it's going to allow the NYXL to get some of that space and some of that leeway to be able to push this payload after losing so much of that time. Well, completely wasting them. Oh, the deflected sleep onto Jonak. Unlucky, unlucky. Oh. They're going to be able to touch as well. Choice of One's got the blade, but he instantly goes down. Guang Bong coming alive. Kariv and Choice of One dead. This should just be the oh. point. Oh, my oh. word. Oh. My Kaylee, don't know where his head's gone. Well, I know it's actually on the back of that wall, splattered all over it. One minute and 25 seconds remains now as they do push on to this third point. Okay, Scrimbug's looking a little bit more realistic now after that little three piece. Rally and the blade. Okay, this is an extremely good position though. Let's take a, a calm, cool, collected breath here as NYXL. They're gonna put themselves on the high ground and set up IV6 for success. They don't have to go in with the Nano this time around. They don't have to wait for Jonak to build this up if they don't want to. Vicky, Friday can just use that damage boost beam on him if they really want to and send Yuppong and Bianca in too to kind of build this, uh, this wall of meat, this shield wall, if you will. Yeah, and the positioning too that you have from Guangbong, if they could find that crucial pick, you could already see oh. Mike Lee trying to get into position, having clear view of the high ground. It's a matter of not getting picked off first. It's the Mike Lee battle versus Guangbong, but here comes Choice Awan with this blade. Now diving right in with a nano blade, finding two. Now getting onto the high ground. That's going to put a dent to NYXL's plans. It's going to be a cleanup here Friday. You're forced to get out of there. Bianca's going to get staggered, and that's going to be a big deal yeah, now, especially. With only 15 huge. seconds. Yeah, 15 seconds remains. I think mean, no, Yuck Punk should be able to touch. Nice. Ideally, it's going to be Yuck Punk. He has got that primal rage to survive, Vicky. They're running into the sights of Mike Lee. Ivy's got Blade. They're going to make their engagement. Yuck Punk's already touching the payload. And they change it over to overtime, luckily, thanks to Yapung and the Primal. But can he stay on the payload? That's the problem here. They're trying to Long isolate the trouble. threat that's oh, been by Kaylee. Lee, and he's gone too. Ivy now having that blade. Does find Kong and YXL. They're finding these necessary picks that they need here. The Diva Bomb not going to find anybody. But luckily for Bianca, it does control a lot of that space. Now currently the charge are falling down as the NYXL are moving right back in. 
Still we're all oh, unlucky. Okay, Grip going down there might be a swap over to a Moira or a Lucio for him to get back to the point in time. Krong still has the flux, but he's gonna have to use it rather quickly as the payload is closing in on that final point. Oh, finding both supports, but they found Krong in the process as he does use that flux that you may mention of and Rio goes down too. What a way to end things because the NYXL did not look good around that upcoming corner right before the payload manages to get to the very end, but the charge unfortunately do not hold them fully back. Well, that's uh, their time bank completely taken away from them, Jaws. Yeah, but just finishing Junkertown, to be fair, Vicky, is not bad whatsoever. Yeah. I feel like as time has gone on, Overwatch in general, Although, I'm thinking back, actually, a lot of the, uh, maybe the toilet bowl games where he's gone 8-8. Eight eight. Oh, there's the sleep. My word. I want to see who woke him up. Oh, it was Yakung. He woke him up. Oh, that is so unlucky. He kind of turned with his left click and then jumped in and realized his mistake. As soon as he's kind of leaping there, he's like, oh, I've made a boo-boo, I think. I think I think I've killed the rest of our team. Looks <laughs> amazing. <laughs> if you could get feel... um, negative limbs for that situation happening, and you know your limbs will go down if you assisting a Genji and waking waking him up and then killing the rest of your team, like that would be kind of funny. Um, it would be almost impossible to calculate, but um, yeah, unfortunate there, Young Punk, aiding in the rest of his team's death. But hey ho, still finish the map. And like I was saying, it is pretty difficult um, to finish maps nowadays, especially long maps like uh, Junker Town. I feel like it's one of the longer maps in the game. And my overall point was, as time has gone on in Overwatch, I feel like it's become progressively more hard with map design as well uh, to actually finish the entirety of the map. So finishing with time, Junker Town, not bad whatsoever. Same kind of comps running out of the gate. Mandu is not going to be there for the pocket, though, on the offense. But you don't really need the resurrection either. Um, a lot of the time, because your spawn point is so close, and a lot of your, uh, most of your DPS is going to be playing from range, or at least your Widowmaker is. Bong Bong having a hard time kind of finding an angle, though. He's taking a lot of these low ground jewels, waiting for people to cross. Uh, not a bad way to play, actually, because you can use your grapple hook to get back as well. You just have to be war uh, wary of where Rio's positioned. A halt can mean your instant death. That and being able to have a lot of these long the sight lines really will help you out here. That halt of bringing together you NY know, Excel, both tanks taking a lot of damage. Luckily, though, Fright is going to be able to reposition, attach themselves right onto Ivy here. And I like the way that the Charger actually disengaging here, going on to a different rotation to try to get right behind them. But it's Jodak that boost. has that nano boost now being able to control some of that space, building into that primal even quicker. And they find Rio, and that's a great pick to put a dent to the charge plants. Nice little anti two onto Choice One and Krong. And luckily, though, for Choice One, he will have this blade online. And you can already see the way that he's getting into position. He, he, he can find Friday here. You see him trying to go for it. He gets hit by an anti, but it doesn't matter. He's still found Ivy, and Jonek goes down. Amazing follow from Mandu there after that anti. And Mike Haley goes down to it. Friday having a pull, and Mike Haley goes down to the aggressive mercy. NY Excel are still holding their ground despite Choice of One really pressuring those back lines. Okay, they're going to be able to go for another re engage here. Jonek hasn't got the nano boost, but they've got the self destructor zone a lot of this. Problem is, Mike Haley is now activated slightly so far in the back line. Big flux. <gasps> And finding Young Punk, that was absolutely huge. And now finalizing Bianca after taking so much damage from that flux. Here comes my Kaylee though, and cleaning up around Jonak and make it two. What a flex! Sit down, Guan Bong. You're out of this fight. But the NY Excel, I love the way that they've been rotating into this fight because despite the charge finding these picks here, Joss, there are they are unable to push this payload. No way did you take that grapple shot there. That was sick, actually. Oh, boy. I love watching Widowmakers go for those super aggressive plays. That was almost a win there, too, for Mike A. Lee. Problem is, the rest of his team were already dead, unfortunately. It was all for star points and anything. Rally available for Mandu. Mike Haley is actually on the McCree now. Doesn't want to take the long range battle any longer. Feels like he's losing out in the tank fight more often than not. That was close. Friday almost had to stay clean. 
Uh, Friday got out of there so quick. Saw the situation, and now the rally, though. Yeah, Punk taking a lot of damage and he's going to sleep, but Big Anti finding four onto the charge. Not going to be able to get anything off of it because it's going to be Mikey Lee who manages to find Ivy. I love the DPS line of popping off here from the charge, and we're going to have a cleanup from Choice of One, ending things up with a team wipe. And now they are going to be able to get this first point with less than a minute on the clock. Okay, so a little bit better than uh, the NYXL did. They, of course, finish it in OT. So we're looking about three oh. minutes now. Oh, yeah. Choice of One and Ivy just bid each other adieu. Goodbye. Oh, Choice of One might be a little bit more danger, but double shield, so he should be fine. If he gets dove on, he can just bash behind him again. Still got this blade in tow. Like, uh, another problem here, you can't even use the damage boost because you don't have Mercy. You're really relying on Crib to set these up with the Nano. So Choice of One's ult's going to be a little lackluster. He used it right at this very moment. Probably just wants to wait for even a Flux as well from the Kro uh, from the Krong, from Krong himself to set up a lot of this damage and then those resets as well. Nice rotation through Mega Health Pack Room to try and take control of the high ground. But Friday says not today, in fact. He activates the Valkyrie to stop this push. Yeah, and to be able to help out with the assist going in, and it's going to be Yakpun with the Primal, but the Gravitic Flux that we're seeing from Krong, especially in the same room as before, do the NYXL learn their lesson? It's going to be Ivy, though, with a change of pace, and finding three here with this blade. I love the follow-up, though. With that follow-up, it's actually going to be four, and Ivy being able to hold back the charge, that's going to put a dent to their plans, especially after they use that Flux, but they do have some uh, ultimates coming online very shortly. Yeah, another very small room of Graviton, uh, the fl Gravitic Flux, not really finding anything at all there from Krong, unfortunately. Choice of One could, wasn't even in a position to use his blade, so now he's going to just use the Nano, I suppose. They're running into Guangbong's sights, though, which is the only problem I can see. And that Nano boost, of course. Oh, he did, but Jonah gets the anti-pick off of Mike Lee. Okay. They trade that, though. I mean, Kriv is going to go down, but before that, Ivy's going to meet his maker. Friday keeps Ivy back in this fight, and that's going to be the number advantage going in favor of the NYXL. Once again, winning another fight, and there's not a lot of time here for the charge to try to maintain this payload aggression. I mean, currently, NYXL doing a really good job at holding them off. Yep, yeah, Nana Boost available, though for this blade for the charge on this next fight. They've been really determined to try and take high ground, Vicky. That's the only thing they've been trying to do. Push the payload up a little bit, take high ground, then put one on payload so you can get a bit of free push. Oh my uh, word, already uh, though, look, I was just dashed in. They just take the fight to them as soon as they see the charges split off. They go oh, in for the that's kill. How, that's how lethal these close range fights are, but it's gonna be Choice One who's gonna be able to get Guangbong. And now that NYXL are nowhere to be seen to maintain this defense, Ivy's gonna meet up with the rest of the team, and so is Friday. Luckily though, the charge have finally gotten their foot on this payload for the first time in what seems like forever. Yeah, they split up there, and that was the go button, really, for the NYXL. Problem is, Charge just did a whole 360 and then Choice of One was like, oh, I can just use Blade now. Didn't even use the Nano Boost, by the way. Like, what is happening with these Nano Blades? Apparently it doesn't matter at all. Like, <laughs> I should stop commenting on it. It's like, oh yeah, he'll oh. never get anything. Oh, okay, anyway, fight starting. I've already killed Choice of One. OT's coming rather soon. Flux is gonna bring everybody up to the skies, Mickey. You just gotta throw all logic out of the window, Jaws. The overtime is now on. Yapung with another primal to disrupt the piece. He's found Mondu, and that's a big pick here, considering that it just leaves Kariv with the sustainability. Here comes Ivy, though, with the blade. Jonak has found Krong, and that's three they out from touch. the charge. Kariv is gonna go down, but yeah, they need to stay on the points. And unfortunately, they don't. That was too many bodies out of the field from the charge, and the NYXL finally put a map on board for themselves. Okay, my word. Again, they just kind of get pushed off. The NYXL were able to come back, just go super aggressive. I mentioned at the very start of this map that they are feeling pretty comfortable on these kind of comps. This is the comp they've been playing for the majority of their time in the June Joust, and they just want to perfect it, it seems. Choice of One's blades have been looking good, though. Guangbong coming in finally on the Widowmaker is also looking spectacular. I can imagine him and Ivy now stepping back once again. Looks like they're taking the headsets off. We'll have to see what they want to do in map number four. That's coming up right after this break.
Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Number three, although the charge, they're a match point currently, two to one. Jaws, is this the chance for the NYXL to make this comeback, or have the charge just taken too much of a charge against this matchup? Yeah, the NYXL definitely on a come up coming into today. That is for sure. The hands of their DPS superstars, their rookies, Flora and Feather, been looking so good. But the charge of having a, a, a turnaround as well is. It seems like at this point in the season, the teams are really starting to get to grips with the meta, which has just been thrust upon them. Maybe a little bit of weakness here and there from other teams that haven't grasped the meta fully just yet. Still, questions remains if NYXL can. And springboard their way back to their former selves and if charge can actually find themselves out of this rut that they're currently stuck in there's a lot of a lot to prove in these next couple of maps you asked me during the break if it's going to be a reverse sweep not sure i i think it depends who's in for the uh nyxl and the charge you'll have to wait and see but map number four is coming up on your screens soon. Guangbong, I think, is going to go out. I think they only really want to play him on Widowmaker maps. And Junkertown mm. is going to be one of those. So now him taking a step back. I'm going to peek over to my left and uh, cheat a little bit. Yeah, so we're seeing Flora and Feather come back into the roster as we go to Hannah Moore next. So more of the same without the Widowmaker, I can imagine. Yeah, you talk about uh, how these maps really play a part into what we're going to be seeing a lot of these players either opt in or a lot of the composition change that we're seeing from these teams where you talk about their, the fact that they're still fighting their footing with these hero pools, and that's kind of been the theme so far within this first week. Now we're currently at the end of this week, and a lot of these teams like the NYXL are finding what they're feeling most comfortable with within this composition. So with some of those yeah. changes, though, and the NYXL having a point on board, they can start building that momentum in their favor very similarly to how they played things out in the series yesterday against the Fusion. Yeah, but on the other side, though, Charge have been looking very, very good. This double shield's been working out well for them. Yeah. I can imagine they just kind of want to stick Krong on the Sigma more often than not. Like, his Sigma is just spectacular. Even the dive with Rio 2, not looking bad whatsoever. Krong, Zarya, and his Diva, nothing to scoff at. Charge looking good. Kariv, of course, at the back line, too. A very, very old school Deep, uh, flex, D, uh, flex DPS, flex support, <laughs> who's been playing on a numerous teams, whether it's mixed teams or it's full Korean teams. The guy's been around forever and he just hasn't seemed to have lost that spark, that flair that he has on the Ana. The charge, this is their point to turn it around. Very few games every team has in this season. Of course, only 16. So every win, every series counts for a whole lot if you look at playoffs mm -hmm. later down the line it's not like our previous seasons vicky where we had an absolute shed ton of games it's a very condensed version of that with three tournaments um for, for the regular season okay let's have a look at who we have in for the mxl2 like i mentioned before fletter and uh, sorry filder Jesus. A lot of F names. So many Flora players. Right? And Feather. It, <laughs> and is, feather. it is late. <laughs> You're going to have to give me a break. What time is it? It's half past four in the morning. So it's getting a little a little bit late there. So uh, you'll have to forgive me that one. And Friday, of course, on the on the MYX. A lot of names beginning with F in our league. 
So the charge have gone, uh, opted in again for Eileen and Choice of One and Rio. So we're not seeing any more swap rounds in the tank lineup. It's going to be long range hit scan for the MYXL, I can imagine. Again, Flora, you stick on the Ash or you stick him on the McCree. Friday's Mercy has just been so good. We looked at the Brigitte stats at the very start of the series, Vicky, mm -hmm. and they haven't been performing crazy well on the Brig, but Friday's one of his best heroes has been the Mercy. We've got a lot of yeah. good play, a lot of good Mercy rookies in this season in 2021. Dree Drow's another one that's just been brought into the league. And Friday being able to pocket this superstar in Flora, who's definitely got a lot of promise to him later on down the line, I can imagine, as he grows as a player, of course, only just turning 18, is a lot to prove for the MYXL. Can the rookies beat a lot of these old timers? People like Kariv, um, that's all to, t uh, all to tell in this series. And a big turnaround as well for both squads too. Let's have a look at the defense. Choice of one and Eileen. They're going to be on the Echo and the Ash. So, yeah, long range hit scan sitting all the way at the back. And it's almost like a Chung Du S comp here, unless Rio does end up changing. We saw Chung Du, if you remember, a while ago running the Wrecking Ball and the Orissa. Mm -hmm. And it was like, whoa, that's a cool comp. I wonder if we'll ever see that again <laughs> from a team that's not Chung Du. Yeah, apparently we will. Kron can sit up on the yeah. high ground, and Rio is going to be able to kind of jostle the point and hold the door just a little bit, um, creating a lot of that space for Eileen. Plus, knowing that a dive potential is uh, imminent because the only thing MYXL have been really playing in the tank line has been the Winston Diva. Rio can go for these counter dives too, either into the back line of the MYXL or diving onto the rest of his team to help them out. And it really shows too how Charge has been changing up their composition on purpose to keep the NYXL at their toes. And with Krong on the Orisa, of course, we may mention of uh, the Orisa changes we've seen going into this patch, but Friday took some damage already, but luckily being able to hold back, that's going to build into Jonex uh, Nano Boost to help out Friday here. So now, though, taking the lead over to the top, they're already engaging, and Eileen's going to punish them for it. Feather and Yakung, they had a plan, but the engagement was not successful. Yeah, a bit, a bit of a confusing positioning here. I actually thought Krong would be holding up on the high ground, but I guess you don't want them just to basically run to the point um, straight underneath you. So he's holding the, the floor, and then it's actually Rio who's holding the high ground. So we're looking at nano boost engagements. That's going to be the aim of the game. Because MYXL weren't successful, Jonax is going to be able to gain a lot more ult charge than Kariv has. So Nano Boost only 10% away. They're just waiting for that, taking a little bit of extra damage. You can see Yuck Pun getting healed up. They've got the Nano, and this is the time to go in. Yep, this is the engagement, and that's exactly what they're doing right here. It's going to be Feather. It's going to be able to go in with a focusing beam and to follow from the rest of the tank. But big anti, that's going to cost Yuck Pun and Friday to fall. Make it three, Jonax two. That was a great way for Choice One to really take four utilization of that moment. Krong finding two. The charge are forcing the NY Excel to reset at that point. But what a strong opening though from the charge. They continuously press back against the NY Excel. And they didn't use anything either. So Jonak used the nano boost. They found nothing just off the back of that nade from Kariv, like you pointed out. A perfect buy. A grenade splashed off the wall, and there you go. You can't really do anything about that at all. You're not going to have a crazy amount of burst healing, or you are with the nade, of course, but you're all anti, so there's not much you can do about it. Plus, then Jonak has to get into a more aggressive position as well to actually land that nade. So Kariv showing why he earned his stripes here in the Overwatch League. Again, they've made their way onto the point or near to the point that is, but look at the ultimates from the charge. They can send Bob in to contest in a moment. They can even copy Yuck Pung and just jump in with Rio. Yeah, Eileen's gonna have that Bob first, especially with those dynamite impacts that we've seen controlling a lot of that rotation. Flora, though, is gonna hang out a little bit in the back before engaging with the rest of the team. The duplicate from Feather, though, has now come on and they've been able to isolate Griff over to the side that's hanging out in the room, but luckily he's still alive thanks to Mandu having that Valkyrie. Choice One wants to go in for the punish, and as Choice One has that duplicate themselves, they haven't utilized it just yet, but in the back lines they will, and it's gonna be oh, Kamen and the Nano to the Anti and the Sleep calling in? Flora! That's it for Flora. He's out of this fight. And the Chargers still finding a lot of these picks. Choice of one with his duplicates. I know we pointed it out earlier, John. But wow, just the way that he's been able to take full utilization over using probably the best ultimate in the game. The Chargers still managing to find these picks. And between Choice of one and Eileen, they are unstoppable. 
what an unbelievable copy from Choice to One. He manages to pick up a three-man anti as soon as he gets the copy on the Ana. That's ridiculous. Most of support copies as of late have just not been impactful whatsoever. You either lose duels to other Anas or you just get instantly blown up. But that is how you copy an Ana and have impact. That was absolutely huge. And the sleep too there. They are managing to get onto the point, but here comes the Bob, the seventh member of the team. Eileen is completely booped Feather, and with that coach gun, taking Feather out of that fight. Now holding onto this choke point, though, as Eileen's the threat, the diva bomb on the point from Bianca. They've already found two ticks, but someone needs to contest the point. Eileen's having a ball in the front, but the rest of the charge have made their way over to find out what's going on on the point here, and it's going to be both Bianca and Yapung. Luckily, though, Jonex taking a lot of oh, damage, but they don't touch the point. Oh, they were right there. Bianca was right there. Yeah, but oh. Bianca was actually getting demegged around the corner. Wow. He tried to run back because the front line from the charge there, Vicky, was just distracting the support uh, from the MYXL at the gate. They got pushed all the way back around. Guangbong was playing so... Uh, Choice of One, sorry, was playing so aggressive. And so was Eileen. They were pushing right up to the doors as DPS, as 200 HP characters trying to peek their heads around. But it forced Friday and Jonak to back all the way off and kind of heal each other and make sure they were keeping Flora alive as well on the Ash. And then the D.Va, uh, Bianca, was just skipping around the point on like 10 HP in mech because he didn't want to get desuited. He got off the point to try and get healed, to try and create LOS, and give his healers time to try and recuperate there. But then the point just disappeared. OT just ticked down. It was, it was gone before he knew it. Well, we have to see that replay on the anti too. This was a nice start. Did, did that for shield this break match. just in time? Uh, oh wow. my wow. God. The timing? What? I mean, that is, okay, that is just a little bit of luck there too. Come on, let's be real. Just getting that pixel perfect uh, shield calculate. break or like the shield disappearing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely calculated. That, that would, that's a ridiculous anti nade. My God, that's a one in a million shot there. Career of experience, you know, paying off, man. He's counting down the seconds, the bubble disappears, wow. lands it and uh, wins that first fight. But look at the uh, percentage for the MYXL. 84%, that's all, well, 83.9% is all that they gained. This could just be over in one fight here for the charge and they'll take the series. Literally everything is on the line here for the charge, especially with the way that they've been performing so far in the series against a team like the NYXL who finally have been able to find their footing after yesterday's match versus the Fusion. Look at the way the NYXL is already playing this, though. They're managing to make their way over the point, making sure that Rio does not get a tick for free. They're trying to defend this for as long as possible, and Kronk took a lot of damage, so they're going to respect that. Yeah, it's going to be uh, another nano game here for Kariv and Jonak. You see Rio taking a bit of extra free poke. There's the nano boost. They're going to send either Rio in or Choice of One in. They have the nano boost to start up that engagement. Constantly talking about there it. Goes. There it is. It's going to be Choice of One. Obviously popping up as we've seen before. Look at the way he melted down your punk, but that was also helped out by uh Fry rather uh Mondu there. And Mondu goes down, but luckily Kriv is still alive. And currently with the charge making their way over to the point, they're able to find some of these picks, finding Flora onto the NYXL and these sleeps. That's both supports out. Eileen, somebody stop them. They are losing bodies and they're losing them fast. And Eileen just got a quick 3k to allow the charge to take this series over the NYXL. Oh my goodness, Choice oh, what an absolute Beast. This guy looking rookie of the year potential already. Okay, wait a minute. It's not over oh. just yet. That was close though. Oh wait, now it's over. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Boostio as well on the point for good measure. The Guangzhou charge take down the MYXL three to one. This was their big turnaround game, but this was also the big turnaround game for the MYXL as well, Vicky. They look good in their last series. They looked very good in their last series against Philly. It could have been Philly with a little bit of shaky nerves or a, a bit of shakiness from Carpe, some people were saying on his hands though. But there was a lot to prove here. I mentioned how there aren't many games in the season for, for the teams to play. And the charge needed some sort of turnaround. Their only win was against the LA Valiant a couple of weeks ago. But now they can finally claim another one against the MYXL. A revitalized MYXL, mind you, as well. Good showings from Choice to One. Mandu and Kariv doing their hardest to just pocket into the high heavens. 
Charge, not looking too bad whatsoever. Flashes of light as well and hope and brilliance for the MYXL, mind you too. Guangbong coming in and performing out of his mind on the Widowmaker on the Junk Town. The only map they did take, mind you, as well. I've got high hopes for the MYXL too. Um, still holding back a little bit. Is it just a flash in the pan? We'll have to wait and see when they go against uh, some tougher opponents later down the line. But Vicky, I think we all know who our player of the match is going to be. Yep, and why don't we put it up on stage here for everybody else to see. Choice One, who has been able to absolutely pop off in the series. We saw those duplicates come on live. We saw how Choice One actually was able to destroy the piece, especially at the very beginning here. I feel like this was a statement maker and to what we were anticipating here. With a lot of these duplicates, he got so much advantage off of them. Even at the very end, you made note of it, the Ana duplicate into that three-man ante, then the sleep at the very end. Not many people could really make that work, but when you talk about Choice One, he is the one that I have my eyes on when it comes to a lot of For that. Sure. Yeah, just an extra credit out of the duplicate. Yeah, he's absolutely crazy. There's no one deserving better right now in this series. The Xfinity play of the match going to Choice of One. This guy, I said, rookie of the year potential, maybe after this performance. And if he keeps this up, there very well could be a time we do crown him. Look at those kills. Wow. 19 focusing beam kills, 22 sticky bomb kills, 29 final woes, 57 limbs, almost 30k damage on the Echo this series guy's an absolute nutcase on the Echo. Yeah, that three-man anti-nade on the Ana, I mentioned it in the cast. <laughs> Support copies have not been great. That is how you do great work. Copying an Ana. Uh, unbelievable stuff, really. Carrying the charge um, oh hardly. And of course, getting enabled too by uh, Kriv and Manzu. That was a really good synergy that we had seen from the charge. And I'm really excited to see how this winning the series is actually going to build into some of that momentum from the rest of what we're going to see from the charge. But guys, don't go anywhere. We're going to be throwing to a short break. When we come back, though, we have some bold predictions to uh, come about us. Don't go anywhere. This is the Overwatch League. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Xfinity, the preferred internet provider of the Overwatch League.
Welcome back, everyone. We just finished our last series with the Guangzhou Charge taking it 3-1 versus the NYXL, a team that finally started putting themselves on the field after yesterday's performance versus Philly. Now, Jaws, it's one of my favorite segments, and we are reaching that time. Pringles, bold predictions. I mean, I love saying outlandish things. That's my favorite thing to do, especially when I look ahead. But I mean, looking at our pickums uh, so far within this first week, I don't know if it's really bold anymore to, to to say some of my opinions at this point. I mean, what are what are going to be what are your bold predictions looking at these two teams that we had just seen? Mm, my bold prediction is that choice of one is going to be rookie of the year. Easy clap. He keeps playing this echo. Hey. He's got that in the back. I don't think that's uh, too crazy. I mean, the way that he just played, I can totally see that happening. Um, I would say for my bold prediction, I think Juice Jonak is upset and the NYXL are going to go through another session of boot camp and uh, they're going to come up on top, maybe get a third seed potentially for Ooh. this month. A lot better than Kay. what we had seen, obviously, last month. That's going to be my bold prediction. Third seed. That's that is pretty bold. bold. Although we have had a day in an A and now almost a full day of upsets in APAC as well. So maybe not that bold. We'll see. I don't know. Why are upsets <laughs> happening? What's happening? Who's writing the script? Hex, I'm looking at you. What have you done? <laughs> Dear Lord, it's been a good day, honestly. Like the next series, yeah. if this is an upset as well, I don't know what to say. It's gonna be crazy, Vicky. I, I'm gonna wonder who's writing the script out here. Like, cause at this point, I'm wondering who is behind the scenes. Who's causing this? Is it just my bad luck where I make these logical picks and then they just get tossed out the window? When last month I was just being biased. I mean, now going into our upcoming series, though, Joss, we currently have the Philadelphia Fusion versus the Chengdu Hunters, guys. That's coming up very soon. Don't go anywhere. That's going to be coming in at the other side of this break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles. Stay in the game. Oh, 
trying to do so much of this work, and they're still fighting these big jaws. Probably here that the Bob is going to have to try to tag on some of that damage, and the Gravitic Flux, though, is going to stop Carpe, get that follow. Carpe took a lot of that damage initially, but Elsa also cleans up Rascal. That's both DPS out. Was a big... Oh, that Bob's still for Mana, though. I am trying to That's take some this. cover. The Rocket for Hush. Oh, my God, no, but he's gone. He's gone. That sleep alarm. I got my eyes on you, and that was absolutely... Welcome back, everyone, and good morning. We are currently on our final series for the day. I mean, it's morning here for me, but Jaws, I know that it's uh, it's about to be 5 in the morning over there. I mean, it's just yeah. been a wild night. I mean, we're, nothing <laughs> is going according to plan, apparently, and we currently have the Philadelphia <laughs> Fusion facing off against the Chengdu Hunters. Yeah, I've watched an entire day of North American Overwatch, and now I'm casting almost the entire day of APAC <laughs> Overwatch. So yeah, I've, I've rolled a lot of Overwatch today, that is for sure. And a lot of upsets too, Vicky. Oh man. S uh, charge taken down, the MYXL, unexpected. The rest of the games today and yesterday, pretty unexpected. Will this be the same? I'm not entirely sure. Philly haven't looked that great, honestly. Um, yesterday, they got beaten by the MYXL 3-1. Carpe's hands, though, didn't look great. And there were questions all over the place, too. Rascal's Echo hasn't been looking uh, all too fantastic either. There's a lot of question marks out for the Philadelphia Fusion right now, who still haven't got most of their roster, Vicky, um, in Korea with them playing in the APAC region. Yeah, a lot of questions up and a very uh, not so common uh, carpet game that we saw yesterday. Overall, just performance throughout the day. But, you know, when it t when you take a look at your pickums, make sure that you set your pickums on fire going down below to that <laughs> link that you just saw. But again, guys, it's been a fantastic week. It's the first week here within a new month, a new format and a different hero pool. And we're slowly reaching the end of our APAC day, Jaws. Like, why don't we take yes, a we look are. at what we have here between the Fusion and the Chengdu Hunters. Yeah, the Philadelphia Fusion, like I mentioned, Vicky, they haven't got half of their squad. In fact, there are rumors currently where Fusion University might be coming back. They posted a graphic or a little video on Twitter, and mm -hmm. there's rumors maybe that some of the players that haven't made it to Korea are actually going over to Fusion University. Whether that's true or not, I have no idea. But at this moment in time, it, it seems fairly likely just because of Fusion, Fusion right now have only been running these players and can only run these players right now because of all the visa issues. It's a very odd situation that the Philadelphia yeah. Fusion find uh, themselves in. I'm hoping that people like Astro, of course, make it back. Shockwave as well, make it back to the main roster and uh, get the visa issues sorted and uh, get to Korea so they can play in APAC. Because those guys have been so instrumental. Funny Astro, especially on the Lucio. He is a bit of a red at Lucio some of the time, but his stats last season were just unbelievable. One of the most gifted Lucio players we have in the league. Of course, he is currently being replaced by Toby, who's one of the more famous Lucios from way back in the day. Back in Apex, earned himself uh, the Boop God title on Eichenwalder mm -hmm. when he was just able to boot people off the map time and time. Again, Carpe sorting his camera. Thank you, Carpe. <laughs> I see a beautiful face. There we go. Okay, he got it sorted in the end. Um, yeah, Toby replacing Astro means that Alarm has to kind of build up synergy with him. The Hunters, on the other hand, have had a ton of new players come into their roster too. They've been yeah. blowing people out of the water as well. Among, unfortunately, a fan favorite. Hasn't seen all too much playtime. Almost no playtime at all in replacement of Gaga, who has just been phenomenal. This Chengdu Hunters revitalized. Leave has been exceptional too. Monk has been a very big surprise to me. His Anna has been looking fantastic. I have high hopes for the Hunters in this June joust because Monk's Anna, it, it just stick him on that permanently, man. He is absolutely crazy. And Gargar's Wrecking Ball has been looking good too. I've really, I've really had it in my mind for a while after hearing this Hero Pools, Vicky, that this is going to be their meta. They can do the ball dive, they can do this Arissa comp that they're running with with the ball and the Arissa, but they've actually been sticking to a lot of this double shield or Arissa and X hero on the tank line and Gaga is just a phenomenal Orisa player too there's not much this guy can't play 
Which is why Gaga is such a phenomenal player for the Hunters. When you take a look at the way that they performed in the May Melee, to no surprise, I had high ex expectations for this team coming into the June Joust. So now, as we get set up and we have a different look at the Fusion after yesterday's performance, I'm hoping that they didn't let that get to their mental, uh, you know, treating today as a completely new day as it is. And, you know, trying to figure out what they needed to iron out because, again, it just wasn't the play that I was used to seeing looking at both Carpe and Rath school yeah it's really not something we're used to at all it's a bit of a slump the philadelphia fusion this happens to the team sometimes though they are the cinderella team after all they always come in sort of the second <laughs> place line and it's not really where they want to be at all they need to take the trophy eventually they need to get there but recently they've not been looking so hot myxl on the other hand to uh, the team that beat them previously have been looking fairly good. Apart from the last series, I don't know, it's all up in the air. There's a big, I don't know if you've seen those big circle diagrams before where X team beats Y team beats uh, Z team beats A team beats B team beats C team and then C team beats X team again, you know what I mean? It's a, a bit like that in APEC, uh, APAC currently, just because the hero pool shuffle up and a whole bunch of other reasons, I'm sure. All right. Let's get into this map though. We're on Mecha Base. Jimmy's locking in Torb. This is what I'm here for, man. <laughs> this is it. Double shield Torb. Give it to me. Jimmy, probably the best Torb player we have in the league. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've been seeing this too. Uh, we saw it earlier on for our first series, just uh, ever so slightly from the Dragons. But already getting set up. We currently have Rascal, who is going to try again on this Echo. We saw that Rascal had a troublesome time yesterday, but does have alarm for that sustainability. Mono gets stunned and took oh, a lot of damage, and he's going goodness. to go down. Gaga actually pulled him right back into that line of fire. And already a great start here for the Pandas. They've been absolutely doing so well within the first month that now going into the second month, I must reiterate, this is going to be a great showing. But again, this is the Fusion, the team that has Carpe, who's been able to do such a line of work as a DPS for this team. The hunt, what the Hunters did there was just encapsulate them, encapsulate themselves in a giant egg, a bit like Josh's head. They just stood oh, there no. waiting for someone to jump in. <laughs> As soon as Mano jumped in, he got dragged back in. Jimmy hits a right click, Leave hits a right click and a stun. Like, there's not much you can do. Ooh. Look at Mano's health bar right now. He's nanoed, by the way. Big anti in the front line, though. Oh, yeah, and that actually catches both Elsa and Gaga, but it's Leave who's taken his leave. And luckily here, currently have the fusion, making their way in, being able to get this point. That was a great start, but you saw that Mano took so that much damage. That was all on alarm. 100% yeah, Vicky, all on alarm. As soon as that nade Mono hits, there. As soon as that nade hit, Manu knew it was go time. Manu, his health bar almost evaporated, Vicky. Like, he got mm, yeah. nanoed, the damage resistance. Yeah, that wasn't anything, really. Okay, fight starting again. A oh. massive anti from Alarm. Luckily, the immortality field's going to be there to save them for the time being. Flux from else is available, though. The Philadelphia Fusion have to gonna go, uh, are going to have to go for this fight rather quickly. They cannot let the Hunters set up on the high ground. Oh. And the dive attempt, though, from Mono, the Gravitic Flux, but another big anti. Can we talk about Alarm's anti nade so far? Within this first round, has just been a statement maker already. Also, does find Mono, so Mono won't be in this fight, but it's going to be up to Hoppa. Fortunately, won't have the reset with the mech, but it's going to be Lee who finds that flash, takes care of Carpe. They've lost Nisha, though, but the rally is going to be activated by Toby to allow the rest of this team to move in, and Hoppa gets taken out before getting right back into the mech. Look at this chaos it's sharing, but it's going to be the Hunters to plant their feet on this ground. That was beautiful. Um, th again, they and can't, Jimmy's can't let the Hunters set up, right? They, they just can't let them do it. If they do, the Hunters then just walk around this big, slow-moving death ball. No Lucio, so it's not that quick. Uh, Mano has to receive Nano. He can't go in without it. Or he requires Defense Matrix stuns and then Rascal jumping in as well to distract, you know. It's so difficult for them to do anything. Oh. Nisho, what are you doing there? What? Nisha wanted to uh, take front line positioning and get shut down for it, but that's a wasted rally. Unfortunate uh, for the Hunters, but luckily Carpe is on the high ground in great positioning with the Deadeye. I mean, shortly, he's going to pull the trigger on it. Lee got anti Instead, just creating some of that space on the high ground. Look at the way that they're positioned, splitting some of that attention up while Hoppa is getting enabled. They take care of Jimmy's turret, as well as Jimmy in the process. 
And fighting that pick, though, you can already see Rascal's getting repositioned with the Death Blossom. He doesn't get stunned out of it. Instead, Elsa goes down, unfortunately not turning in place. It's gonna be Lee who now takes his leave again, and Rascal on the Reaper. He's making his comeback here. He didn't like his performance yesterday, so he has to make up for it. Yeah, he has to make up for it big time. The Death Blossoms don't really get all too much in these comms. There's so much to negate it. But Elsa, unfortunately, Lee, uh, Carpe, sorry, wasn't able to stun him out of it. Um, or leave, sorry, wasn't able to stun him out of it. So he was just kind of blasted against the wall. Okay, Gaga back on the Orisa. They have the flux. You see Elsa there flick up with the, the oh. kinetic grass to try and stop the anti nade coming through as well. That was perfect. We're already learning our lesson, especially after Alarm's been putting those antis. Yeah, not going to get anything from the Gravitic Flux. Going to have to back off. Instead, though, the positioning that we currently have, the Fusion Holding, has been really working out in their favor. But it's Gaga who finds Mono, the Molten Core, to create some of that space and do a lot of damage. But it, Jimmy gets anti to get a big anti finding three. Jimmy's not dead yet. I don't know how, but Leave is the one that falls because of that anti. Luckily, keeping that turret still in rotation, but the overtime is crucial here. The Fusion are fighting for their life, and another big anti on Sagaga. That's both tanks down, and the Fusion now been able to flip this point. Alarm has been so consistent so far. Man, that hot Basel just struck there. Didn't get anything, but it pushed the entirety of the Hunters out from that very encapsulated position. They're going to engage the rally yet again. This is not going to go down first this time, though. No, because after learning their lesson here, Monk got hit with the anti, but it's Lee that gets that dead eye onto Toby. They noticed, they learned their lesson, and Leaf now getting the stun and taking care of Rascal, making a quick 3k. That's a great way to secure this round here if you are the Hunters, and it's Leaf who's going to hold the helm and take the driver's seat for this fight. Oh boy, Leaf with the 3k at the very end, nicely done. Oh man, I love the Hunter's comp, especially on this map. You just set up in a nice little bunker and it takes so long to take you down as well. So when they do have control of the point, Philly have to invest so many resources. Ultimates, like important abilities like anti-nade, sleep to try and dislodge you. It's very, very tough to deal with if you are the Fusion who just basically want to dive on you, Vicky. They want to send Mano in over and over again with his nano boost, but it's so hard for him to actually survive. And then Hunters were also doing a very good job of stopping Rascal getting on top of them. Rascal was going for these cheeky flanks. He was immediately sniffed out, and as soon as McCree kind of turns towards you as the Reaper, you can't really do much, especially if he's at range. We're going to go to Sanctuary. Slightly different look from the Hunters. As Jimmy's over to the Soldier, but still sticking with this double shield. And that's going to be interesting, too, because then Jimmy's going to want to get into position right behind Elsa and Gaga. And Roscoe also matching Jimmy on the Soldier. The only difference here is Carpe on this Ash and the support lineup too. And you currently have Mono who's just trying to get in some of this poke pressure, but the point unlocks very shortly and you already see the position getting taken up by Fusion. Get a little aggressive, but this side is going to be controlled by the Hunters and they're not over committing. They're just letting Roscoe's that space trouble, go over Vicky. to Fusion. Yeah, he can't really do much here. He needs to be able to kind of escort himself out. He's going to get dragged back in once again. Mano is going to be able to touch point, continually cycle on it to make sure the Hunters can't touch. But he's going to be in danger. If he steps anywhere near the front line of the Hunters, he's going to go down pretty quickly. Elsa gets oh. naded, but uh, yeah, knocked out of the immortality field as he gets taken down. And this should be the point now for the fusion. Yeah, that was perfect positioning too. After the immortality field, booping them out of it. And it's Rascal who is uncontested over to the side, by the way, getting a lot of line of sight over to the Hunters and Hoppa getting a quick 2K. Mono wants to put himself on board, make it a 3K though, Hoppa. We have our eyes on you. And currently the Fusion have been able to take this point first, but the way that the Hunters have been playing here, Jaws, they just have to readjust.